clicks on it. What the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> just like I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, what is going on? My face is on my head. Um, I what? What did we do with this? I don't this know. This isn't supposed to be. That's not right. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can. All right. Close this out. <laughs> Close that out. Let's go back to here. Let's add this one in. There. <laughs> That's more like it. Just found your vlog on YouTube. Love it. You guys are doing it. Okay. Uh, so he watches. He watches vlog pastors. Do you know uh, Mike Ordonez? Is he one of the? Nope. Okay. Um, uh, nope, not that I can think of. <clears throat> not saying that I don't, but I don't. If that make any sense whatsoever. Uh, what am I... How do I... Like, I stream so much, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> John Hayes, make sure you remember uh, what settings you change... So when the intro rolls, it doesn't change. Oops. Good looking out. Good looking out, John. I, I, I can't do it now. Like once we're live. You're in because, too deep. <laughs> and yeah, we're in too deep. <laughs> we'll just hope I did it right last time. Although in yesterday, I was streaming for the digital ministry yesterday. And that one, I, I, I messed up pretty good. But yes, that was a different stream setting. So in my eCam, I've got separate things. So I think we're good. We'll find out. Um, what was? Oh, I know what I was doing. I was gonna bring up my studio. This earpiece. This one is acting wonky. <coughs> oh goodness, COVID. I get that out of there. Angled the wrong way. That's always fun when you get these angled the wrong way. Wow. There we are. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, are those form-fitted for your ears, or are they just, they're just kind of like standard uh, earbuds? They can be form-fitted. So, like, this thing goes whoop. Oh, okay. I guess I was thinking like uh, oh, I, cast in-ear monitor type thing. Hey, hold on, it's not in, so I can't hear. But... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like cast in-ear monitor. No. Okay. No, no, no. These are... I don't know what you're going to call them. The thing in the... the whatchamacallit. The, the, the whatchamacallits. In the... the doodads in your ears. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. What? what? How do I not know what I'm doing? There it is. Live control room. That's what I want. I want the live control room. I want to be able to see some of the stuff and the things that are that are happening. So, uh, yeah. John also he hopped in. And he said, "Try to throw us off on the day, huh?" I did. But it didn't work. <laughs> so, dude, I don't know. I mean, I don't think we've been. We if we hadn't switched from Thursday to Wednesday recently. I could see myself, like if I was somebody just logging on, I have my shows that I watch on certain days that I kind of expect out of certain people. Right. I'm like, I, I don't, I would think the whole yeah. day would be off. You're like, I, I hate these this guys is Thursday because they keep <laughs> messing with me. First it's Thursday, <laughs> then it's Wednesday, then it's Tuesday. What's next? You're going to run it in the PM at like 6 PM. Yeah, maybe. If we have to. <laughs> We, we just do what we want to do. I do what I want. I do what I want. <laughs> I got the extra large mug today because whoa, my 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 floating coffee hands have left me. I'm amped up. I'm ready for some but, floating coffee hand today. Unless you go to that weird view that throws me off. The weird view that throws. Well, you, off. you you do the you do the studio view. Yes. And it's not a floating coffee hand to me, so I'm I can't the do BTS. it. BTS. I'm not faking it. It's got to be an authentic floating coffee yep. hand. Yeah. Dustin Damesworth saying that we cannot mess him up. He's on and he's here, and he said, in fact, this is better. So. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Dean. John says same here. Less going on for Tuesdays for me. 
hey, I'm I'm glad. I mean, there's typically more going on for Jared and I on Tuesdays. But oh, the funeral yeah. happened tomorrow, so it was like, it's either going to happen whenever Jared says, ah, I got about this much time I can squeeze out for you, or you don't get it at all. So. Yeah. It's... It- Lord willing, it's a season. We're all we're all in one of those. Just Jason Remster. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. I was just thinking about Jason this morning. I miss him. He he goes to our church. He's one of my friends. You can out and him, and he hasn't been there I, in he, six he, well, weeks. They've been. It's not been that long, but they had like COVID breakout among the family members, and so oh. they did the wise and responsible thing of distancing themselves from us socially. Mm. But my social yearnings misses him. <laughs> See, I get on board with that, Jason. You're sick, you stayed home, you social distance. <laughs> exactly. Now, I mean, as a pastor, when I'm sick, I show up. I spread yep. my germs. Everybody loudly. gets COVID. I mean. <laughs> it's like, although I'm fully vaccinated now, so. There you go. That I have officially taken all of the marks of the beast. <laughs> Good we timing. We almost had a spin Good. take happen. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, what else have we got going on? Oh, Dean! Dean Lentini with his magnificent beard. Dude. Every time I see his little profile, I'm like, I know, man. I tried to shape up the beard today. Well, the non-existent beard today. I was. It's a hack job. It's a hack job. I got to go back in and figure this out. Dean, pointers, tips. Yeah. How do you make it go? Boof. Uh, I I venture to say that he's going to say, just Genetics. let God have His way with it and let it grow, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get all these like swoopy curls and stuff i'm like i don't yeah. i don't know like it's I've, all got this, I've got to keep it this short because i've got one patch right here that goes Wee! <laughs> <laughs> oh nope dean kim's in he's like hair dryer that's what? how you do it a hair dryer would have never guessed that uh, okay. it makes sense i mean think about it you curl hair by applying heat you straighten hair by applying heat Okay. So why not? And actually, they do have like heated beard brushes. Yeah. I was looking at getting one yeah. of those, and then I decided, nah. I just use like a, a boar hair brush, and it's good for now. So, but he said they're on lockdown up there still in, oh, Canada. So the days of the week do not matter to them. Did, did you like my vocalization? I just... There's a Can lot you of see heat. Flower's head, mm. right, right here. Flower's head is just peeking, peeking out. Oh, flower, <laughs> flower. No, nope, she's gone. She gone. Hang um, on, I just alerted my boys. Everybody settle. Yep. John says, "Admit it, changing the days of the week was actually to keep us from derailing you during the podcast." No, we we we're all for derailing. I don't like, want to get off the off the train here, but uh, like, isn't it great that we have a whole nother live stream to derail? Joshua on. <laughs> uh, nice, I'm digging nice that attempt. One. I did a great job yesterday of that 15, I think it was actually 18 minutes of just locked in on the lens, yep. trying not to notice the comments over here and just thoughts. You did a great job, man. Thoughts. So trying to get that out. I was, I was rather impressed with how it went. Um, so yes, he said you were mid drink. And it would have been amazing if we caught that on video, especially the way you did it, because you turned to your right. And that would have been even funnier if it came out, because on screen, I'm on that side of you and you just would have spit it right into me. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been the only way. That's Electronics are not over here. They're over yes. here. So it had to. Have. Um, <laughs> without hair drying, I look like a tumbleweed. I think we have found the title for today's episode. In the Wild West, Texas wind? Yes. Oh, my. Oh, that's so good. Oh, are we about ready to go? Yep. We're about ready to go live, and that means it's going to roll the intro, like, and I get to yell at my son. Ten seconds. But ready for green light. Something. Four, two, 96, one, and roll. 
Welcome to the Vlog Pastors Podcast, a podcast all about the stories and strategies of sharing God's love in the digital world. Now, here are two pastors that love to put a camera in their face and walk around in public. They are the Norm and Cliff of Digital Ministry, Jared Brown and Joshua Verwers. Howdy <laughs> folks, good to see you, glad you're here, glad we're back. My name is Norm and that guy is Cliff. <laughs> Uh, honestly, when it comes to Norman Cliff, how many of those episodes of Cheers how, do you think you've even watched? Me? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's been 15 years, but, uh, Enough I've to probably, know, like, yeah. who they are and yeah. that, what was it, Ted Danza's in it? Yep. Pretty much. And no, I've, I've seen it. a little bit more than that. I've, I've, I know their love interests. I know their basic premise for characters, but that's about it. I, I watched some of it enough to know that it was when it was on. I enjoyed mm -hmm. watching it, but that was about it. I know that it's a place where everybody knows your name. And yes. they're always glad you came. Always. Always. I mean, because that's where you want to be. You want to be <laughs> where, you know, people see that our troubles, troubles are all, are the, all same. the same. I, yeah, that, I was going to say that. I think that's. You You want to be on the Vlog Pastors podcast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> What's Bring up, everybody? It around for full circle. So uh, let's see. We got uh, some shout outs I want to give here. Those that are joining us live on this special Tuesday edition, special Tuesday edition for the live stream, special Wednesday edition for the podcast upload. If I actually did this on time and we're doing it because I got a funeral to attend tomorrow, which is sad for us, but amazing for her because, man, she just got the greatest promotion life will oh, ever yeah. give her. Oh, yeah. Uh, so John Hayes said we were trying to throw them off. Uh, Dustin Damesworth in the house, and he was saying, there they are. Here we uh, are. Jason Remster, Dean Lentini. What's up, Dean? What's up, and Jason? And also, Kathy is here. Hello, Kathy. Good to see you. Kathy hey. has not joined us on a live stream in a long time, so I I mean, it's it's a joy to to see her here. We have no idea what we're going to be talking about today. As per usual, we just <laughs> get on here and we ramble and talk about things and stuff and stuff and things. I, I, I just, sorry, my mind just went. You said as per usual, and I got to think it, I guess everybody shortens down words these days. We get to where like, we're like, hey, throw the, throw those taquitos in the of. Everything's about the of right now. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, that, uh, I'm I'm just sitting here and as I'm listening to you, I'm realizing quickly that I do not want these in-ear monitors on because uh, I tried to show you how I could like form fit them. And in doing that, I broke loose the form and it doesn't fit. So, oh, no. Come out. Oh, no. Back with the old trusty. And then we it's a good thing that I have these. Ooh. Which we blame those for the broken wire and the mass hysteria a couple of weeks ago when we couldn't for figure the longest, out. <laughs> and it was it was so unfair to these headphones. These are uh, like They're... one audio uh, headphones. And I bought them after scouring the Internet looking for a budget friendly. I wanted something that was quarter inch that I could plug in that had good studio type pickup, but also that could be wireless if I wanted to plug in Bluetooth and just kind of carry them around for everyday listening. I didn't want on ear. I wanted over ear, wanted to completely encompass this ear inside the cushions. And I found these and the first like several days of editing with them and just listening to music. It was amazing. I was so impressed. Mm -hmm. And then we had all of these audio issues and it's like, I was going to do a great review on these and they it wasn't suffered. even their fault. <laughs> I know it wasn't. It wasn't even their fault. It was just, you know, it was the situation. It was what was happening, and they just. I told you, man. To the, the I love. I love how when we were working through that, we were troubleshooting. Like both of us are like, no, it's on my end. I think it's because it's yeah. like what we can control, right. and we're digging through the different elements of it. You're like, no, I'm pretty sure there's a broken wire here, or it's in. The, it's a setting in the roadcaster, and I'm like, man. <laughs> Everything here is think, new, and I don't know how to run it. Yeah, I'm I sure also think that um, part of it could be us having that Christ-like humility of just wanting, hey, if I can take the blame for it, right. put it on my shoulders. I'm, I'm gladly to take it. So I'm actually going over in my Trello board and putting one audio review. 
I'm putting it back in on my <laughs> my list of things to. That's how you do. Speaking of, I've had a lot of people contact me about uh, digital ministry stuff. Obviously, that's the space yeah. that we're in. And asking for, like, how do we do it? Weird. Stuff that we talk about here on this show. But mm. now we have a specific show that deals with, apparently, uh, events and new releases as far as tech goes and how to apply that in ministry specifically. When when did that happen? All of a sudden, I, I turned on the old YouTubes while I was working. Was that yesterday and, or day before? And, yep, and the show yesterday. And then the, and show's, the show's running. There. Uh, I, you know, what was it back in mid 2019, I started up the digital ministry podcast cause mm -hmm. I was talking with a lot of pastors that they were asking stuff and it was like, okay, let's, let's do this. And I did, I think one episode kind of on my own and I saw what the traditional avenue for podcast was and it was, you know, interview type format. And I thought, oh, yeah, I can do that. So I started interviewing and I interviewed uh, Trey Van Camp and I entered Jason Mayfield and George Holloway. And then I think I had even even scheduled an interview for like um, I might have even recorded the interview with Andrew uh, Latisaw and Mario Escobedo. And I had these like interviews done. And by the time I got three interviews in with two more like batched, it was just like, I don't like interviewing people. <laughs> so and it had just kind of derailed this a little is not bit fun <laughs> so because of that it was like well i'm i'm just not going to do this anymore so i just stopped it but now we're back in the case of you know covid hits and people are asking questions and it was like ah i need to get back in here and i need to start uh really getting these answers because i do a lot of it one-on-one -on -one stuff but i need to do more of it that is in a broad, like mm -hmm. it's that I can, if I give, if you and I just had a conversation and we've had these conversations, you're getting the value. If I do the digital ministry show in a podcast format where I can sit there and say, here's this one nugget that I was talking to Jared about, or I was talking to Vaughn about, or I was talking to Michael Maddox about, or wh wh whoever, talking to them about this thing, take that, throw it as a podcast episode because it fits with digital ministry. And now it's not just a one-on-one, -on -one, it's one-on-many. So, well, it's cool how they're all, like, all of your content is starting to overlap one another. For instance, like, on this show, we may not be able to dive into a question that somebody has as deeply because we're, it's you and me, and we're bouncing back and forth, and there's going to yeah. be a rabbit trail that comes up, and we're going to chase it. But you can dive in whole hog on the other one and just go as, as deep as you want, and there's nobody to interrupt you or drag you off off topic or you know introduce shenanigans or anything like that, right. you can go for it. But what I want to know, real quickly, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. why did you start with vertical video of all topics, of all launch <laughs> topics? Like you've got so much yeah. tech behind you. Why vertical video? So the main reason I'm doing, and I'm going to be spending like the next few weeks uh, on the show looking at different areas of vertical video or maybe some different vertical video platforms. Mm -hmm. And the main reason is because I believe that the church as a whole, and when I say the church, I'm defining it as the body of Christ. Okay. We have done a poor job of being on the forefront of any type of technological advance. We're always pulling up the rear, which means we're not the first voice. And in the world, if you want to make a big splash, you got to be the first one in the pool. And so the vertical video, especially short form vertical video content, we think, okay, TikTok is just already blown up and that's it. No, Instagram's getting in the game. YouTube is getting in the game. And then you've got other platforms that are jumping in, even with the stories format that like Instagram and Snapchat have been doing for years because of that. I, I don't think we've even seen the real breakout of what short form video can do, but I think it's getting really close. Uh, I got a feeling it's going to happen this year. It's going to explode huge. So that's where I'm sitting there and I'm trying to like bang that drum and say, Hey body, let's, let's do this. Come on church. We can do this. You can get in the vertical video format. Mm -hmm. So I'm wanting to kind of give them some reasons why, and then how, uh, and then even some, what they can do. So that way they can start getting on the run. And like with YouTube saying, stuff. they're going to be doing, you know, this, uh, 
the shorts and they're starting to roll out that type of a um, platform, you know, inside the app. And they're going to have like even their shorts camera uh, to where you can kind of record shorts internally with that. And they're in the beta production of it, man, it's, it's about to, it's about to happen. Um, and I'm seeing other shorts, other channels that have been using the shorts and they're starting to see a lot of growth on YouTube. Mine hasn't quite kicked in just yet. Um, but it's, it's only a matter of time. Um, now and quick, I'm just batching that content. Quick discussion on theory. Yeah. So, cause my mind automatically has to file it. I was mm -hmm. getting confused whenever you were, you were talking about uh, vertical. Oftentimes I attribute that to, like you're saying to TikTok or, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram where it has to be, it's forced to be short. Even in um, YouTube, it's forced to be short. Right. Now, I hate short. To me, like, short is just a grab. But in theory, like an attention grab, you know, view grab kind of yep. a thing, it's short so you don't have to invest much time. And I was teasing in the comments section saying, you know, hey, we, we have a problem with committing, you know, in, <laughs> in our world. We can't commit right. to anything. So I, I don't like shorts. Shorts is the way that I'll check something out without checking something out. But that's really what it's for if you build it into your overall package. So if you have good long form stuff on the back yep. end. Shorts is a good way to get exposure, and I think the church could use that to to cast the wide net. Yeah, I've got my shorts pumping out. They're 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 quick. Yeah. They're easy to make. Maybe. <laughs> Unless well, and, you're just and here's another in early days. Of, another aspect of looking at this, I think that short form content is the best way to dip your toe into the pool of video. Uh, period, going in a short form fashion. Um, and I will say that because we, we've talked about, um, you know, with me in this channel where my vlogging, the first few vlogs were kind of like, ah, okay. And then I had some like studio stuff and it was like, eh, whatever. But about the time that you and I met up from there on, all of a sudden it's like, wait, what just happened? Cause like there was this, this huge leap in my video production and my quality and on YouTube, you don't see the progression. You just see, okay, it's here, it's here, it's here. And then, you know, it's like here. And then all of a sudden it jumps up to a whole nother level. Well, it was just me going through in the last couple of weeks, some of my old videos on my external hard drive. And I saw, cause I've got it broken up in like uh, JV, the final products and, or yeah, final product. And then it's YouTube. But then there was one that said Instagram and I clicked on Instagram I did like 30 days of vlog stories on Instagram there in the summer of 2018. And so it was a daily vlog, but it was in a story fashion. So mm -hmm. I was doing 15 second clips that I could stitch together to do this two minute long vlog. And now looking back on it, I was like, oh, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, you, guys like you and I will make you know, we can make a vlog that's eight, 10, 12 minutes long. You get somebody, uh, you know, a minister that's never made a video for online, uh, a Christian that's never picked up a camera before, never even grabbed their phone and tried to, you know, talk to it. And then they try to think about how to make a video. Nine times out of 10, it's either a 50 minute rambling session or it's like a two minute long something. And even that two minute long was rambling. Mm. I think true. a lot of it is we think that it, we're going to have more to say than we really do, especially when you put a camera in front of you. It's like, uh, I have stage fright, even though I'm a paid speaker. <laughs> you know, it's it's that, that concept. That's yeah. so true, man. Because so, like even used to be – if you're used to being in front of people all the time, when that little red dot comes on, you're like, <laughs> need to get right? to the point quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where I think that short form could really kind of be that – entry level of just sitting there and saying, let's do it. I mean, we've been telling people you need to be on stories and doing stuff. And a lot of people are doing stories. So, so it's ag like agreed. But it. with, with the, the understanding that you have, you have content behind those stories, because if you yeah, just yeah. have, I, I get what you're saying, dip your toe in the water. But if I found something that I like of yours, say you just started, you're doing a 12 second video. It's super mm -hmm. short. It was to the point, knock my socks off. Well, I'm now in, okay, what else right. do you have? And I want to yep. see more than 12 seconds. And maybe it's my personality type. Maybe there's people yeah. out there who could just do the 12 second TikTok 
rabbit hole, but I want to find out more, make more, make yeah. longer, make more. I think it works. My personal opinion. Here's my here's my theory, my content theory. If you have shorts like that, they're leading to long form trust content. Correct. You know, I know it. it sh- I know it about it because be. of the shorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, like it, it, it because it's good. It really should be. And what I'm seeing like over on TikTok, especially a lot of the people that are really trying to build that audience and not build it around like I make these cute little videos, but around like a, a personality based, you know, account. <clears throat> they're not just doing these short little clips. They're also doing live streams. And so they'll do a live stream on there as well. And then you're getting the short form, but you're also getting a long form content Hold uh, on. from them. Are you wait, what platform? TikTok. TikTok does live stream? Yeah. Shows you I'm sorry, I'm ignorant <laughs> in the Really? Well that's yeah. a, that is a game changer. <clears throat> you might need like a certain number. I don't know the exact specifics of it. <clears throat> of, of oh. like if you have to have a certain number of followers to do it or not, but I, um, I feel like you just bought me on the nose, like, oh, well, that's now interesting again to me. Yeah. I'm so anti, you know, of all yep. people, but for the folks looking in, I'm so anti TikTok. It's not even funny. I don't understand the point of it, but that's different. Yeah. That's different. You can get somewhere with a, with a live stream. Oh, okay. Yep. okay. Yeah. Augie's okay. coming in with the, uh, the info. He's saying, yes, if you have enough followers, you can live stream on TikTok. Oh, he says thousand it's a followers. thousand followers. Um, right. Cause a thousand followers is easy to get. Uh, well, it can be like, I got a thousand followers pretty quickly on TikTok, Um, and that was from like one little video. It was a trending Christian where it was, I don't know, like, yo, Christian check. And then people were just like sharing things that kind of said that they were a Christian. And I think the one I did was like, uh, preaching and baptizing and stuff like that. Um, and that was it. And that one hit, I think close to 50,000 views. And I got a thousand subscribers pretty quick from that. Uh, but I was also doing some other short form, you know, like little mini Bible study stuff, um, that I was putting way too much work in, by the way, way too much work in that burnt me out on TikTok right out the gate. Cause I was trying to bring like all my after effects pass through transitions and this is cool, but it was taking me like three hours to make a 15 second nope. video. And it was like, no, nope, nope. Now I'll spend one hour and I'll make, you know, like 20 videos. So it's like just completely different. But yes, if you, if you get on there, there is, but even on like YouTube is the same thing. I mean, yes, you can live stream with DSLR, Straight out the gate, you don't have to have, you know, any certain number of subscribers on YouTube. But once you get 100 subscribers, then you can start, you know, streaming from your phone. I think it's 100, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. 50, 100. Yeah, Yeah, I think it is. Which I know there's a lot of churches like, ah, how do I get 100 followers really fast? Ask people to follow you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like, really. And if you're a church and you're trying to do that, value prop. Like, give the value. Tell mm-hmm. people why. So if you just went to your Facebook page and said, hey, would you please consider going and subscribing my church's YouTube channel because we would like to be able to live stream our services and we only have a smartphone to do it. YouTube says we need 100 followers in order to do that. So we're at 33. Can you help us get there? If you do that, you're going to get it. You're probably going to have to ask like 15 times, but you'll get it. Um I, and I think that's honestly the one of the easiest ways to get the first hundred subscribers, uh, period. However, if we're doing it not for like a church type mission, if we're doing it for our own personal ones, I would say add another little caveat to that value prop and then just tell people, hey, go check out my channel. If it sounds like something you might be interested in, subscribe, please. And then if you are interested, or even if you're not, share it with your friends because maybe they're interested in my shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> so like I I had a ton of my early subscribers from that, of just people that had shared because they bought in and they're like, I, I, I don't know what you're doing and I don't know what you're planning on doing, but it sounds good to me. So maybe somebody else will like it. And then people that I had lost contact with or even never met and they're like, hey, so-and-so told me to come check you out. Anyhow. That's, How do we yeah. get on that? I don't know, but that's interesting. That different journey for me. 
Like I, I went and pounded uh, Facebook. All my friends and family was like, hey, made a new video. It's awesome. Come check it out. Hey, made a new video. It's awesome. Come check it out. In retrospect, I will say it was not awesome. <laughs> I was lying to them. Uh, yes. It was catastrophic, and I understand why they did not subscribe. That's funny. That's funny, but I can totally relate to that. Um, Augie saying short form content is a great conversation starter. Unfortunately, many use it as a conversation ender. Talk to me. Breach. Yeah. Talk to me. What does he mean? Uh, well, at least the way I get that and Augie, you can, you know, give some, some other thoughts here if you want on what you mean by that. But what I've seen a lot of people doing is they want to come out and make it a controversial, um, hot take you know oh, so it's like okay. hey hot take um and then they want to start you know throwing stones slinging mud and it's like y- dude duh. i we we sat down the other day and i was asking joshua just because no offense to, i'm not none of you guys of course but i don't know the greater christian audience as far as who is making content mm-hmm. because i've found it so offensive in the past and i am Discouraged to say that nothing's changed because I was, I was asking say, Joshua. I still find it offensive. <laughs> I was asking, I was asking Joshua. I'm like, okay, who's out there? Like, who's making what types of content? Is there anything new going on in the world? And uh, it took me through a couple of them, and it pretty much, to the to the man or woman, everyone is taking hot takes and just like whatever's whatever's hot, trending, relevant. Which I understand the theory behind it, right? But and just making it so controversial that you have to choke on it. So, yeah, there's there's a couple exceptions to that, um, but a lot of them are doing that and a lot of them just want to give their hot take opinions. And to me, there's already enough division in the world. Come on, man. Why do we need to be more divisive? I mean, I I don't know. I, I thought we were told in Scripture to try to maintain the bond of unity and to pursue peace with all people. So. Yes, there's a time that you are to rebuke people. It's typically supposed to be in a one-on-one, not a one-on-many fashion. Um, And there are times that you just got to call a fool out for being a fool. Again, one-on-one, not one-on-many fashion. At least that's my biblical interpretation. Mm -hmm. Now, this right here could be considered a hot take. And people could be offended by what we're saying. But I would prefer to sit there and say, if if somebody is going to take a hot button issue and truly bring a grace filled, merciful, loving commentary to it, then it needs to be seasoned with that grace. And like one of the best ones I saw was just over the weekend, Vaughn Sanders. He had uh, Dr. Seuss and cancel culture. Mm, And mm -hmm. I saw the thumbnail and my first thought, if I didn't know Vaughn. Another one bites the dust. I'm thinking if I like (laughs) if I didn't know Vaughn, my first thought seeing that title and seeing it, I would have reacted what most Christian YouTubers are doing on that. And. Let's come out guns blazing and let's just start, you know, firing off all sorts of fire and and heat and like offensive, you know, uh, divisive. This is my opinion, which means it is gospel. Uh, And Vaughn, man, I just love listening to Vaughn. Mm -hmm. He's got such a meekness about him. Um, And meekness is not to be confused with weakness. Mm -hmm. And Vaughn comes in and it's just it's soft. And yet it's biblical. And I left listening to his his video feeling conviction. And I like told him in the comments and I'm like, call me Holy Spirit convicted after listening to this. Right. But thank you for saying it. And he just came in with, here's my personal experiences. But ultimately that doesn't matter because the word of God says this. And it was just looking at it from that approach. And it wasn't a case of saying, we're all doing it wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. He was like, there's a better way. What if we did this? What if we tried to follow the Christ pattern? Uh, And that was just like, yes. And I've seen like (laughs) Trey Van Camp has done that on some of his as well. I don't watch a lot of, you know, Trey's commentary on, on some of this stuff. 
and if Trey's ever catches this, it's because he does such a great job with the clickbaity thumbnails mm -hmm. that it reminds me of all of the others that I've watched and I refuse to watch again because they do come in in a divisive manner trying to, to create more division in the body of Christ. But having watched Trey's, it doesn't. It yeah. looks like it from the thumbnail and the title, which you've got to do that to get the click and to get the views. But when you get into the content, it's like, oh, no, this is actually a very balanced, uh, very Christ-like perspective on it. So, And this is a, a huge, huge – yeah, there, there are. There, this is a huge topic that we could spend like, a, you know, 10 episodes on. But the balance of not just integrity, but what we're called to be on this platform – because you have to, you have to, if it, in the same breath, I could say we need to reach the lost for Christ. We, we need to be attractive. We need to be clickbaity. We need to cast the wide net. We need to be evangelistic in certain realms. But at the same time, yeah, anyway, you, you get yeah. what I'm saying. There, there's, there's a space and a time and a purpose, and each one has their own unique. Uh, some are apologists, so, you know. Some of yep. us are a little less, <laughs> not right. you know, not to that bent. But I just don't know why when I when I look or whenever I ask and and then go to following up on the research of of some of the names that you gave to me, mm -hmm. that's what we do because that's the YouTube algorithm. That's not what we. do. We aren't making things because God told us to do it, or Correct. we feel an unction, or we see a missing hole in a in a piece to to bring something of the kingdom into yeah. this digital space. Instead, we're doing, oh, that works, sold out for the view, and I can understand that, really can, absolutely, because of the balance of like one of our one of our live streams, one of our our um, you know uh, most viewed live streams was a bit of a controversial. Life stream. We're talking about politics. We had some things that we felt like we needed to debrief on. Mm -hmm. And that's tough not to go, let's talk about politics again. Right. Then, you know, I'm passionate about it. You're passionate about it. But it's not necessarily something that brings um, edification, unification in yep. this particular time. So you have to let it go. And it's like, all right. It's a it's an interesting world and hats off to all of you and us who are <laughs> who are braving it. All yeah. final thought on that follow the lord right <laughs> it's it's chaos but it does look repetitive out there where did yeah. we start off on this thing uh i i don't know how we started off on this uh, oh we were talking about augie and the conversation con um starter and the conversation ender oh that's um, right which did we answer he had said uh so many say this is the point deal with it instead of starting a conversation about it yes gotcha. a hot take gotcha um and he says that I want to be the loving guy. I want to start a conversation with people and not slap them with my holy two by four. <laughs> uh, oh, we're going to have so many different lines from this stream to decide what's slap going to be the Slap them with title. a Holy Spirit two by four, I think. Yes, yep. Uh, he does say uh, with the hot take or uh, conversation ender, we need to be willing to have people that have a different opinion and know there are platforms for discussion. Short form's not an option for that. I, and I would I would agree. There's not very good discussions that can hop on with a short form. And I even take an approach on uh, almost a Jason Mayfield type approach on TikTok. Yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm not your pastor. Uh, so there's a lot of people that are asking me questions that require a deeper conversation. And I don't know. I'm like that, that meme. Ain't nobody got time for that. And it's like, sorry, I I'll give you one or two replies and that's it. I, I don't have time to get lost in the TikTok hole because now my focus on these one or two questions and what are often rabbit trails that don't even pertain to the video that I've given itself. And that's discouraging for me because I'm looking at this. If somebody finds this video and I'm talking about, let's say, uh, here's an example. Uh, what was it? John uh, 524 that Jesus says, whoever believes in the son of God and that God sent him will have eternal life. And so my short little video was belief is one of the most important things to inheriting eternal life. According to John 524. Mm. Well, somebody wanted to hop in the, the comments and say, you know, but belief's not the only thing. I'm like, I didn't say that. I said, according to John 5, 24, Jesus is saying it's one of the most important things and like the necessary thing. <laughs> it was like, you're wanting to get into the weeds on this. And it's like, 
No, I'm not here to cause an argument. I'm here to try to, as you said, edify and build up. And so to get in the weeds and get caught off on some of that stuff or, I don't know, a troll that wants to hop in and be like, it's all fairy tales. Prove that God exists. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, no, I, I don't. Nah. I'm not getting hooked by your bait. Go fish somewhere else. Um, <laughs> so you, d- you don't want none of this whale. Um, Augie saying our church released a video six minutes long talking about the last year and saying we miss you here welcome back and we got lots of feedback on how we guilted everyone you know what well I I, yeah I can I can see that we missed you what do you mean you missed me I wasn't gone that long yeah (sighs) oh You're about this, to rile this up is the a difference. In me. There's a, a very big oh. difference between being offensive and taking offense. And this would be a case where their church was not being offensive, but the other people took offense. And because they took offense, their problem, not yours. Um, I, I would say you did everything you could of just saying, hey, we're back. I know it's been a rough year. We miss you. <laughs> and, if, and if you do that and they get offended by it, well, Here's the holy two by four. So um, <laughs> Dean says, I've done a few yes. hot take type videos and I might do more, but for mm-hmm. me, it has to be something that I really believe and that I can add something to the conversation with scripture. Uh, yes. And that's, that's the one thing like, and, and make sure you don't hear Jared and I wrong where we're saying that everybody who does hot take or reaction yeah, type no. videos is wrong. I think we need a lot of voices in there. I just think there's so many that are not adding value. They're not actually adding anything to the conversation and they're coming in with the wrong motive because they're not trying to add value. They're not thinking or even asking the simple question first of why am I even making this, you know? And like Jared and I, when we did that, uh, that episode about pastors and politics, it was a case that we wanted to not only share some of the things that were on our hearts, but we wanted to try to give people another way to look at, Uh, politics according to being a pastor and Christianity and what should that look like? That's the stuff when I see that happening, I'm like, yes, I would venture to say there's way too many copycats out there and all they're wanting to do is just, you know, it's, it's a hot take. And some of the best YouTube marketers out there are telling you controversial things, give a hot take. I mean, tell people that Anybody that drinks coffee with any type of substance added to it is not a real human being. You know, get, get, they're not so. wrong. They're not wrong in this. You're you're going what, to get they're aliens clicks. for drinking foo foo coffee drinks. <laughs> no, to to stay in those relevant places. Uh, this is right. what people are talking about. Um, we need to say something. We need to say people are getting clicks and views off of it. They're not wrong in that. It's just it. You can tell at a certain point it's low-hanging fruit. I think that's the way that you described it the other day, Joshua. It's yeah. really low-hanging fruit. And it's not that we shouldn't pick that from time to time. It's just like, but did God call you into that? Or are you just going for it? Just hopping on the train, hopping on the wagon. And that's what gets, honestly, that's what gets us Christianity believers in a bit of a bind every now and again. It's yeah. everybody else is doing it. It, yeah. We're trying to re- – it's in good faith. We're trying to reach the world. We're trying to reach the lost. We're trying to do what God told us to do. But instead of checking in and saying, is that where you want me? Is that where you want this ministry to go? Is that where you – is that what you're doing in inside of us, this community? Or am I deceived? I don't know. That's probably a little too strong, but <laughs> – Talk about a hot take. Yeah. <laughs> You're deceived. Go ahead. And yeah. Steal that um, one from the thumbnail. Augie saying that he says, Dean, podcast is a better format for conversation. Um, I, you know, I think live stream and podcasting can be any long form content is really a great place for it. Medium format, you can get a conversation started if you focus on one issue, one topic, one point. If you need to elaborate beyond that one point, that's where you need to be looking at long form content, podcasts, things like that. And I think those are good resources for it. But uh, again, when it comes to, you know, talking about vertical video and what that looks like, 
that's where I would say the, the vertical video is a great place to kind of start the conversation and also kind of introduce people to who you are. So like you're saying with having some other content behind it is good. I would say pastors need ministers, Christians in general, everybody, quite frankly, needs to be thinking about what type of short form content can I have? Mm -hmm. But they also need to be thinking what kind of medium form content and what kind of long form content I have. And I don't think we need to stick with just one. I think we need at least two of those options. <clears throat> if you do short form and long form, that can work because like what happens if you, all you are is a short form content creator and Vine goes under? <laughs> you just lost your cash cow and you haven't figured out how to transition into any other form. And back then when Vine was in its heyday, well, guess what? There was no place that was doing short form like that. And because of that, there was no real transition. And they tried to do that stuff on YouTube and it wasn't working. And they they just couldn't. So, you, but you've got YouTubers that can transition and go over when they've got a medium format. Let's add short form. Let's add long form. Live streamers are doing the same thing. I mean, you sit there and you look at like one of the largest channels out there, PewDiePie. Okay, so... He's not just doing the medium form, you know, uh, Reddit type reviews and reaction videos to things. He does live streams as well. That's how he really kind of amassed this huge audience. And because he's got multiple forms of contents, uh, that's where I think he's able to make a lot of that transition. I think in our spaces, that's something that we can learn. I also think that there's just a concept behind realizing that different lengths reach different audiences it's something that we as ministers of the gospel can take away in a practical approach to all of our ministry how do we then you know sit there and try to reach people in different ways how can i take this message that god has given me you know for let's say a sunday morning and how can i deliver it to multiple generations how can i hit the boomers how can I hit the Gen Xers and how can I hit the Gen Zs? How can I hit the millennials? How can I hit everybody in between? I think that type of a approach is something that we can easily kind of plan in when it comes to our video type format and figuring that out. And short form, I think, is just another piece of the puzzle. It's also, if we're got our eyes open, it's kind of where things have been heading for lots of years. I mean... Mm -hmm your sermons have they shortened up at all or are you still giving you know four hour long messages nope they've shortened <laughs> and and the which is which is crazy because this is on the good side you have people who go i need more right and that's what you want that's what you want with your content you want people to go oh i like the short i like the medium i want to listen to the long but you're probably not going to have it vice versa i mean you might you might have the onesie twosie yep yeah, that was, and that's something that when it's that concept of leave them wanting more, leave them a little bit hungry. I mean, you want to, you want to meet the need and you want to definitely give them all the food, the nutrition that they need on it. But if you fill them to the point that they're like full and bloated and all they want to do is take a nap afterwards, it's like, I mean... Yeah, I love Thanksgiving dinner, but I'm glad that Thanksgiving dinner is only like one or two days a year. <laughs> because if I did that for every single meal, I, I couldn't sustain it. Like, I just couldn't. But, I mean, there are times I want to eat it all, but not every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, I need, I need a little bit of a break on things. And I think that's kind of the approach that we do with even the video. Well, it makes, it makes sense because if I am doing the entirety of the teaching – at church, mm -hmm. something's off, at least for our group. For our particular group, if I'm doing 45 minute long uh, preaching or teaching on something, then I need to set up something for them throughout the week, another opportunity, because certain people are already engaged and interlocking. They're already getting that. It's 45 minutes of something. So yeah. if I can scale that back, or an hour, whatever, you know, whatever, if I can scale that back and I'm hitting a sweet spot of you know, whatever you're preaching, maybe maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, 10 minutes, five minutes, doesn't matter. Then they're also getting other touch points throughout the week, other long, right. medium, short, 
opportunities right. to, of teaching, of, yep. of edification, of working out their faith. Yeah. And it's not quite so dependent upon one deal, except yeah. that's the deal. If, it, if you're dependent upon one platform or one form, then you're probably missing out or doing a disservice to your audience. Floating coffee hand. Ah! <laughs> Holy cow. Did I get it? You got it. You got it. Yeah, I, I'm definitely with you on that one. Uh, leave them, leave them looking for a little bit more, and I like leaving them looking for a little bit more, so they can also just kind of search it out. Take some leftovers with you home. Nibble on that for the next few days. Um, and and from a practical preaching aspect, I love taking people on a Sunday morning. Hey, open your Bibles. Let's go here. Let's go there. I want to make sure that we're we're all seeing the same word. And if you've got your Bible, yes, pull out that Bible app and let's flip over to, you know, let's do that. Let's get in, whether it's a physical or digital Bible. But then I also like, you know, kind of like almost a speed ramp at some point in the the message where it's like, this verse says this, this verse says this, this verse says this. To you the have point to go that find it. They're just yep. writing them down. And yeah. it's like, hey, you know what? We're we're wrapping up here real quick. I got a few more verses I want to hit. Just take them down. You can check them out later. Uh, and then it's like, let's just hit those rapid fire. And then I find out, you know, from those that I'm I'm with on the Bible app or whether it's on other social media, a couple days later, they're posting that scripture. They're giving a thought on it. And so it's good to know that, yeah, you took some leftovers home with you, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and so. even, I mean, Lord forbid here, even sending them somewhere else. I like, mean, it's a thing. I mean, trusted people, we do it in church. We have home groups. We have we have Bibles. We have, uh, what is that called? Sunday schools. We entrust yep. their learning and their edification to other people. And it works because there's a full, there's a fuller understanding of what God's doing. What if, just throwing this out there, what if there were pastors, lay leaders, folks online that we also were edified from? We could send them over to Joshua. We could send them yep. over to Trey. We could send them over to Vaughn. We could send them over and they're, yeah, they're getting it. Well, and, and here, a practical, just practical advice for a pastor. If you're going to send your people to somebody else or say, hey, go check out some other stuff. Just let them know. Check it out. If something doesn't quite sound right, right. come, let me know. It's and we'll we'll search it out. I, I don't I don't put a one hundred percent stamp of approval on anybody's theology, including my own. Same. <laughs> it's like same, man. This and and I tell people that even on a Sunday. I was like, you know, when I get to a point where God has kind of showed me something, and I know I've preached a message a couple years you know, in the past. And now I kind of have a different take on it because my knowledge has increased. I've got some new enlightenment on this topic. Oh, I'm quick to say, you know, I heard this crazy preacher a couple years back and he said this and pff, man, that guy didn't even know right. what he was talking about. By the right. way, that was me. <laughs> it's just like, it's true though, I've grown. because you, you have something, you're, you're growing, you're learning and it's the best, you know, right now, I think my theology is on point, but I know better <laughs> like, than to say it's all inclusive of everything that God yes. is. Because if my if I can understand God fully, I've way undersold him. And this, yeah. I mean, this little feeble brain. Yeah. And and my favorite Bible teachers and my favorite leaders that I they will be the people that I will follow nonstop. Like I'll just keep following them. They lead from a place of saying you have no business believing a word that comes out of my mouth unless you can find it in your Bible. Mm. And at that point, it's it's that, you know, Acts, what is it, Acts 9 in the Bereans. Uh, actually, I think it's maybe Acts 16 or something like that in the Bereans. But, you know, where they it says that the Bereans heard the message that Paul had preached, and then they searched the scriptures to find out if it was so. And it's like, okay, Paul just said this, but is it actually true? Search it. Find out. So... And know, and John John adds to it as well. He says, "Filter all things through the Spirit." And I don't know how many times I've been sitting in a service. Now I, I came from a yep. particular background. I'll leave it all where it where it is. You'll have to hop on my channel and find out all that mess. But I came from a, a certain theological background, and I remember sitting in meetings, going, 
this is not this is not what I've been taught, <laughs> but something is burning inside of me. And if this be true, right. you know, like it was just Holy Spirit pounding in and going, hey, you need to get rid of this. You need to let this go. This is human teaching. This is yep. this is a real deal. And likewise, I've sat in I've sat in meetings where I go that checks theologically, but there's something off here. Yep. I yep. don't know what it is. Filtering things through the spirit. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that. Uh, it's it's one like I've got um, a guy from our church that he gets out, drives out into Western Iowa, and all the Christian radio stations are like gone, and they're just they're not there anymore. So the only Christian radio station he can pick up is the Catholic channel, and he's like, "What do you think?" And I was like, "Listen to it," and he's like, "What?" I'm like, "Listen to it." And I said, and if you hear something that sounds a little squirrely, talk to me about it. And we'll just take a look at it. <laughs> it was like, and occasionally he'll come in and he'll be like, so I heard this and it just doesn't quite sound right. Right. I'm like, all right, well, it, if it doesn't sound right, it's one of two things. It's either not, well, one of three things. It's either not said right, it's not heard right, or it's not right. And I was like, let's figure out which it is. Maybe there's something wrong with your hearing. Maybe you're not hearing what they're saying. Maybe they're not saying what they should be saying, or maybe they're just, it's the wrong thing that's being said. And I, I mean, I do the same thing with mine. I love it when people come up with me after I get done preaching and they're like, uh, you said this, is that what you meant to say? Nope. Isn't that <laughs> the like, best? Nope. Didn't mean to say that at all. Sorry. It came out that way. Here's what I meant. So. Every pastor on here understands what that's like. We are yeah. like we hit, we said nothing about purple elephants, but sometimes, <laughs> exactly. sometimes you 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 yeah. hear them out and you're like, oh yeah, well actually that's better. That checks. Yep. When, <laughs> we said nothing about purple elephants to be clear, but God must have been communicating something because that's real. Yeah, not, <laughs> yeah not exactly. the purple elephants. I'm just being silly. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm a Baptist. I... We filter all things through Spurgeon. Dean. <laughs> Who said that? Is that Dean? Dean. Uh, I was just going to say, as soon as you said that. Uh, and he's pretty much rocking a Spurgeon beard as well. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, that's all right. You know, Spurgeon was the prince of preachers. I've been called the Prius of preachers. <laughs> Oh my. Uh, okay. Hey, there are a few. I do want to get to some of the, the comments on here. These guys are loving it. Uh, Augie saying, Dean, that made me laugh a lot. Um, Wendy, Pastor Wendy Coop in here laughing as well. This is, oh, <sighs> so good, Dean. Love it. Uh, there were a couple comments I wanted to jump in at. I saw we had somebody new in the house as well. It was Mayhem to Earth. Hello, if you're still with us, good to see you here as well. Um, John Hayes was saying, hey, Mayhem to Earth, just enjoy the ride. If you haven't seen these guys, <laughs> just, That's so just true. enjoy the ride. Just buckle uh, up. Perkins family down there in Haiti saying, hey, guys, uh, I believe if I remember right, this is Luke, right? Um, I got trouble on that one. I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. You're not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Not with a ten foot pole. I was calling, uh, I was calling people by wrong names. So now, everybody's their title. Everybody's their handle. It's Luke. I'm not even calling uh, Sonic Daniel. It's not it's doing Luke. it. I didn't. Is Sonic's name Daniel? I don't know. It's either Daniel or David. See, that's where I get in trouble. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's why he's I Sonic. Love it. Hey, not doing so, it again. Perkins family. In Haiti. Of course, it says the Perkins family. It could be anyone. Maybe one of the kids have hijacked the, uh, you know, the account at this point and are, are streaming. <laughs> that would be awesome. I don't know. Hey, guys. I, I, if I remember right, um, it was Luke that had said that they were going to be doing like some live streaming and some Q&A and stuff down there uh, trying mm. to kind of uh, tell people what it's like to be missionaries in Haiti. So go check out their channel, by the way. Uh, do that. Yeah. Any of these guys that you see hopping in the chat, if you're if you're not already, you know, if you're not already subscribed to them, click on their profile pic. Go over and take a look. The vast majority that we've got here, I mean, we're all followers of Christ. We're creating different content out there. So go check them out. See what they're doing. Give them a subscribe if it's the type of content you want. If it's not, don't just give them a subscribe because you might mess up the algorithm and prevent YouTube from finding their ideal audience. But you should support them anyways. Leave a, leave a comment. Give them a thumbs up on a video. Make sure that you tell them that... Uh, I don't know. 
something funny that I'm the Prius of preachers or <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so, uh, we had some other ones in here as well. Um, but uh, 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 scrolling down, yes, uh, Dean was saying Vaughn is the man, and Vaughn is, is the man. true. Vaughn is the man. Um, you know, Let Vaughn's you not that Vaughn. far away from me. I think Vaughn's within. Vaughn actually might be closer to me. I don't know. I'll have to check this. He might he might be closer to me than even Diana is. So Ooh. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to figure out some time to like, pull over there to Bolingbrook, Illinois, I believe is where he's at. Ooh, that's not far at all. People like uh Vaughn, uh Dean, I'm trying to think of a, a few others just that might be in here. Um they I'm telling you what, they're the people that change the game of how you interact with, with YouTube. When you make a video and they interact with it in a like a real way, yeah, not like you you know the game yeah. went to somebody's channel, hey, great video, loving loving your work, yeah, just there for the sake of attention and eyeballs, that sort of thing. When they really interact with it, it's like they this means something. I'm I'm enjoying making it with other creators who are making it makes you, it makes you want to go over there and get involved in their life it it gives it grants them a whole lot of um not my i'm just I'm trying to say money but it's not money monetary value what's that called uh uh it gives a whole lot of value basically deposited into my life where i'm if they ask me for anything hey careful if they ask me for something i'm there I'm there. They need a collab. I'm there. They need a video. I'm there. They need me to, you know, whatever. I'm there. Yep. Yep. Anyway, good dudes. Agreed. Good ladies. Agreed. Down there in the chats. Absolutely. And encouragement um, out there to anybody who wants to, maybe you're not a video creator. There's another guy. There's a guy named Barry. He he hops onto my videos now and just enjoying the ride and making valuable yeah. comments. It's just worth it, man. Yeah, absolutely. It comes a friendship rather than a jab. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dean saying, I think a lot of those videos we're talking about the hot take and reaction videos are the new Christian news cycle. I would agree if they were actually somewhat honest in their approach. How's that for a hot take? <laughs> I missed this one. Where is no, that? We're talking about the hot take videos. Oh, okay. Um, and he says, I think a lot of those videos are the new Christian news cycle. I think they could be the new Christian news cycle, but you know, like, Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are so many gullible Christians that believe that what Babylon B puts out there is <laughs> actually factual. It was my father-in-law for a while. He's like, this can't be true. What's wrong with this news site? <laughs> like, I've seen people on Facebook sharing a Babylon B article, and it's they've not actually even read the article. Mm -hmm. They just saw the headline and all. Oh, and it's a clickbait type headline that is so outlandish. Nobody could possibly believe, possibly believe that's true, right? Wrong. And they share it. And you know what? A lot of what these Christian React videos, they're not too far off of a Babylon B because at least Babylon B is satire. A lot of the, the Christian React videos are half truths at best. Mm. And I believe we're supposed to speak truth, not half truth. And it's supposed to be truth and love. Just my take on it. And that could be a hot take, if you will. But I do think that it has a lot of potential. And yes. here's the other thing Jared and I were talking about. We're seeing that there is a void in those that are actually addressing these issues from a humble, loving, grace-filled, edifying perspective. And if there were, because we're seeing a void in that, maybe this is exactly. an opportunity for somebody to fill that void. Exactly. Because I don't, I don't watch a lot of those because there aren't people doing it. And it might be a good, it might be a good place to just drive this home and say, if that's you, if you're saying, as we're talking through this topic, if you're going, man, there's a place for this. We could we could have a hot take on it, but do it well. We could we could take something that's trending or that's something that needs a little bit of grace, 
seasoned upon it and I could do that. Do it. There is a yeah. space for it. Do it well. Yep. That's not me yep. though. Go do it. Somebody else go do it. Yeah. Luke popping in saying, wait, stop. The B isn't real. Yeah. <laughs> I love sarcasm. <laughs> One of my favorite forms of communication. Uh, okay, so let's see. There were some others. Uh, John was saying, our Wednesdays are more interactive. Spent 25 minutes discussing how people heard something I've said. Yeah. 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 Like, w uh, typically our, you know, home groups, if I'm a part of anybody's home group, just be warned, we're we're derailing any plan you had. You invite me to a home group. <laughs> nope. So true. As soon as you look at me and be like, hey, pastor, any thoughts? <laughs> you have opened up a can of worms, and here it comes. Isn't that great? Just like, ask when, my mom. When we go, well, you're probably, you're differently, differently abled. You're differently personality. You're a different personality, basically. Whenever I get to a place, when I get to a uh, small group, I try and hang back, especially if I'm not leading that, try to hang back. Let them take all the questions, you know, stay like as far away from it as possible because I'm going to have an opinion. <laughs> like, I'm with you. I yeah, try to have. do the same thing. I try to do the same thing, but it. it they always go, what do you think, pastor? And I'm like, yeah. no. You're I good. mean, I, I go weekly to my mom's home group and she'll tell you, I'm sure she would agree that there have been many times that she'll look to me for like approval, be like, is that okay? And I'm like, this is yours. You do what you Come feel Come on, like. Debs. Just, just yeah. run it. Your house, your group, you run it. You invited everybody. I don't know why you invited me, but you did. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. So I, I definitely understand the, the, the 25 minutes on that. So um, uh, let's see. Everybody is their handle. What was that? Who said something about a, a handle. Uh, we were talking about uh, Perkins family and not calling anybody oh, yes. other than their handle because yes. it's dangerous because you could call somebody Luke who's not Luke for an entire season of vlog pastors. Right. Well said. About Whatever. It, Whatever. <laughs> entire families could laugh at you. Whatever. Yeah. We, we, you're you're forever known next week. Whatever. We're gonna open the intro. Hi, my name is Joshua Verwers, and this is a bite of Ronnie. <laughs> so um yes, uh let's see. Hey, great video guys. I love your work. Oh, thank you. Who's working? Who do, nobody does any work around here? Well, we're not we're not doing work. See, look, seriously, look at this. Here, I'll even I'll even show you. This is the work. You want to know what kind of work we're doing? <laughs> the work we're doing is Oh yeah. That's it. We ain't, we ain't doing no work around here. <laughs> but do appreciate you. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, Augie, is this your Twitter handle? I think she was sending it, and he said, uh, yes, his augment is his handle all the way around. Uh, yes, Augie, he makes my day over on Twitter. I post stuff, and he actually comments and replies. And he appreciates the fact that I just post all sorts of randomness on Twitter because Twitter he, could be the cesspool of the internet or it can just be my closet where I just <laughs> shove stuff in. And who knows what's actually in there? Like, did uh, I tell you this, Jared? What? Augie is the Twitter pastor, by the way. We were talking about this little guy. Yes, yes, you'd lost it off your road go. Two Wireless years go. ago, I lost that thing, and I happened to be getting rid of boxes, and <laughs> there it was. I used it. I lost it. Didn't know where it was. Apparently, after I used it, I put it back in the box thinking. He was just I, telling I me. He's here. like, my one ding about this wireless go was this flimsy little muff thing, dead cat that broke off of it two years ago. Yeah, there you go. Oops. So, anyways, that's, that's that. Um, let's see. Yes, and John, even, yeah, uh, Babylon B even says that it's satire, and people still share it. I don't know. I don't know. Augie says, Perkin family in Haiti, our church, we have had that conversation with a hundred people. 
I don't know what conversation that was. Church, oh, wait. No, never mind. I do know what conversation it was. It was the conversation. Wait. The Babylon Bee isn't real? <laughs> yes. And Perkins family saying, yes, I think there is actually a market for thoughtful, gracious commentary. There you go. Uh, see? There's Be a market blessed. for Be it. Sent. There's a market for it. I mean, I feel like there's a void in there. I personally don't feel like I'm called to fill that void. This is a conversation God and I have been having for a couple weeks. Um, I I don't think that's me. Um, could I? Yes. But I like Jared was, wait, sorry. A bite of brownie was just talking about. <laughs> Good <laughs> he safe was just play. talking about how currently it seems like all of my video content is starting to really blend together nicely and the the overlaps are in there it's it's been three years in the making if i start giving some of this grace-filled thoughtful commentary uh, i i don't know how that fits unless i do it inside a vlog in kind of like a storytelling fashion and then maybe yeah so um there you go you guys can be praying for me on that, that I don't distract myself did, with all of the possibilities. You did Kanye. That was one of the better ones. You did I, Kanye I did in do. vlog format, and that was kind of controversial at the time. It, it people was. People were saying that was nonsense, which... Yeah, it we'll was. See. And I, I loved the some of the comments that I had to block, um, or that YouTube blocked for me, because profanity. <laughs> Good lord. They were just hilarious. Uh, that's sarcasm again which pastor wendy is fluent in sarcasm i love hearing yeah. i i think we we ought to be fluent in as many languages as possible <laughs> uh perkins family i'm like jared on this but i find inevitably my presence in a room i'm not sure what that meant what sounds good i uh, missed that one uh, yep, uh, man. I called a former pastor's daughter Becky for a year, but her name was actually Anna. Augie, you're my uh, hero. Uh, Augie, I love you so much. That's hilarious. Um, he thinks I need a l l larger, a larger coaster for this mug. Show me. Yeah, you're barely on, man. I mean, it's it's covering. Is it wrong that it's that close to the to the MacBook? You need a stand. You need a full on like ornate stand for your mug to go on. Just for that. Yes, that lights up when you put it down. <laughs> right. I'm dreaming here. Be, okay, I'm dreaming. That would be hilarious. Um, okay, so I go off of the reaction on people's face when I referred to somebody wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, my default is brother. Hey, brother. How you doing? Oh, man. I hate that. I hate that. I what? feel like it's such a crutch when when I do it. Not when other people no. do it to me. I don't care I about say, that. I do it all the time. No, and when I, I do it, crutch, I'm like, I can't, I can't remember your names. So my wife has this superpower where she can remember everyone's name. And it's like uh, there, there's a scene in True Lies. Oh, there's a reference from many, many years back. And he's walking around the room and he's got like a earpiece and they're introducing him to different people. And it's it's the person in his ear that's basically telling, and she she'll lean over and she'll say that's uh, that's Joshua, his wife is Genevieve, and then she'll go to the kids and it's like, what? oh that's, how do you do that? How do you do that? Any situation, she remembers their names. I hate that. It's so important to her that people feel connected and known, and she knows their name. It's cool. It's why it's cool to watch people's defenses come down. I don't have that, and so whenever I go, hello, brother. Or when you're praying for somebody, to me, that's the biggest offense possible. I'm praying for you. I care about your needs. And I'm getting ready to say your name, and I can't remember it, but I know your needs. I, tr pro I promise, brother. Oh, that irks me. Hey, can I Rant. give a hot take? Oh. Yeah. Can I give a hot take here real quick? Got? Here's here's got? a hot take. Hot it up. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say this. I know there's a lot of people that are ragging on our current president because he keeps forgetting stuff. <laughs> I've I've tried to pray for people after service, and after you get about ten different prayer requests, I'm like, man, I should have been taking notes. Yeah. And then I'm like, God, you heard it all. Thank you. <laughs> 
You remember <laughs> the like, one who needed so, the thing? Hey, can we just take it easy on the guy if he is losing <laughs> some, some of that memory and forgetting some things? Just, All I know just is just my grandmother, him. apparently, she <laughs> had these dementia pills that she could take that would lessen the stages of dementia yeah. or whatever. Can you start taking those in your 30s? That's what I want to know. Because that would be awesome. But you don't need it. You've got your wife. Just anytime <laughs> you're praying for people, bring her up here. And then her job is kind of like, you know, uh, uh, the first lady's job to whisper oh, she, in the ear. And she's just amazing remind at it. you who you're praying for, what you're supposed to be saying. Be like, hey, when when I get ready to pray, you're right here. Like, right here. <laughs> yeah. Help me. <laughs> and help uh, Joshua. Joshua. Yeah. yeah. Dean says he's always writing requests down. I am too. Like, and if there's, after about two, then I'm like, oh, man. And I pull out, and I'm like, I'm writing this down. And then, of course, I start praying, and my eyes are closed. And then I'm like, uh, uh, okay, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I'm not the only one, right? Dude, I've got a fellow pastor who writes everything down in his cell phone. It's brilliant, but it's also kind of weird. He writes everything down in his cell phone, what their names are, their family names, where they work, because like, he's networking with the community all the time, where they work, what their prayer requests are. And so if he sees them at Walmart, he'll go, all right, that's uh, that's Joshua and Genevieve, and they were praying for, okay. And he'll go over there and start the conversation so that he's up to speed. It's amazing, but that ain't me. Yep. So we had— <laughs> Like, Lord, start giving yeah. me their name because they're coming towards me. What's their name? What's their name? <laughs> yep. Uh, Never mind. Our ministerial Never. association, we had a, a lady that she was kind of like just our, our contact person for the longest time inside the organization where she would just call all of the members inside our entire ministerial association on a regular basis. It was like every three months you'd get a phone call from her. And every single time she'd be like, hey, Joshua, this is Bev. How you doing? I'm like, Doing great. How's Genevieve and the kids doing? They're awesome. Hey, I was wondering, how was Kiara's doctor's appointment? You know, you were telling me about that last time, and they were going to get a checkup, and we were praying for you with that. And I'm like, I couldn't figure out how this woman did it. I'm like, you've got thousands of people you're calling. And you remember, oh, no, she was taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, but it was such a personal touch because she knew she's on the phone. Yeah. And once, you know, once the curtain was pulled and the Wizard of Oz was revealed, I didn't care. Yeah. It, you didn't ruin the mystique for me. This this scene right here shouldn't ruin the mystique for you. This should just be like, wow, how cool is it? <laughs> He's in a spaceship right now. How like, awesome is that? It's amazing. All of this, this stuff and the things. He's landing the SN11 right now. Anyhow, that's I, I do that. Uh, so, uh, John says, I do the Trey Van Camp method of using the Quizlet app to put someone's name on one side and the info about them on the other. That's awesome. I didn't even know about that. I didn't either. Apparently I haven't been paying attention to Trey as much as I should. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Augie we said, love I you, switched Trey. to Echo Prayer app because I don't even remember to write them down. Ooh, you can just say them. Like it. Uh, okay, a couple more comments here, and then I want to try to land this if we can. Sure, let's do it. Um, uh, let's see. I was in a band with two Joshes and loved it because I could couldn't get their names wrong. Right. Yeah. We were called Josh and the other guy. That was <laughs> the band name. I like it. Three of you, Josh and the other guy. <laughs> That's. That's amazing. Oh, there was one up here. Uh, da, da, da. John, I believe, had said it, if I can find it. Uh, I think he avoided the comments during the live stream. Yes, and that's the way it went well. That is exactly what I did. Um, he, oh, when it comes oh, to Cheers. Oh, yeah, for your digital yeah. ministry podcast or uh, when, live stream. Yeah, when it comes to Cheers, he says, my mom watched it, and it was just that it was on, and I knew the theme song and now the song all you needed. is stuck in Dean's head for That's weeks. That's all you need, on Dean. Uh, yes, John, this is You're welcome. Uh, the Vlog Pastors Q&A or stream or show or whatever we decide to call it. I want you to have the Q's so we can have the A's. 
You're absolutely correct. Dustin was trying to mess us up. I saw this comment. I didn't appreciate it. He said, Echo, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and John, is there a reason you prefer Trello over Evernote? Yes, I loathe Mac and iOS and all that stuff. You can have Ev Evernote. I have Evernote on my cell phone, my Galaxy S20. They have it now. When it first came oh. out, it wasn't. Oh, okay. It was iOS only. And so I was like, no. Plus, I'm kind of like a Windows and a, a, a Microsoft type of a guy. So I use OneNote. But I use Trello as far as the board goes to keep track of all my stuff. And so I actually, I should probably do that. That would be kind of fun, I think, for some people. If I shared my, my Trello video creation board over on my... Uh, Buy me a coffee for my membership. Here's a little plug for you guys. Give me money. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just going to be... Subtle. Uh, I got it. So subtle. But seriously, uh, over on buymeacoffee.com forward slash Joshua Verwers. For those that sign up for membership, uh, it's like $10 a month. I think you can actually increase it if you want to give me more. Uh, but for 10 bucks a month, become a member. I'm dropping some more value and trying to give you guys some extra stuff that I'm not sharing elsewhere or that I'm not sharing elsewhere yet. So you'll get advanced looks at things and you'll get some, just some bonuses. So if you guys are interested in finding some more help, uh, especially from me to kind of help you create more and share that message God put on your heart, that's the place. Hit that little, little, it's not even a link, but type in that thing in your browser. Just don't leave this live stream before you do it. And then do the thing and the stuff and what the stuff's and the things Jared knows. I put a little bit of stuff over there. Some value here and there. Sprinkle got some more, there. but what do you think about that? Should I put that, that Trello creation board that I've got and kind of here's, yes. here's how I'm tracking videos and stuff. Yes. I think you should show every detail of how you make your videos. Every <laughs> last one of them. I do. Just you, like what you, you said to, to me today. You're like, Hey, it's a bite of brownie. So give us all the bites. We want to see it all. I want to see every bit of how you make the live stream. I want to see every bit of how you plan out your videos. I want to see the tools and the resources that you use. I want to see it all, all it, of it. It would be kind of fun to of do a, like, you know, uh, Potato Jet. He mm -hmm. did that 24-hour live stream, or it was a 24-hour vlog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where he just recorded every bit of his day. Yeah. It would be fun to do like an extended vlog like that of creating a vlog. So here's like the entire process. I mean, I, I wouldn't edit it down and I also wouldn't like chapter it up. You guys would just have to filter through if Mercy. you wanted. But I mean, that that's a full look at it. It would be interesting because I did do that with like Logan when we did the drone vlog where I was recording with the drone and then he had the A6600 and he was like following me around. So it was cool to have that behind the scenes perspective on some of the stuff. It was, it was fun. I don't Although know where I you don't... would put it. Go ahead. Sorry. Where I'd put what? I don't know where you would put it, but you had mentioned, I don't know whether that's uh, in the buy me a coffee or whether that's just a, a future vlog, but like a full breakdown of how you set up for live stream. You know, how you, how you do your templates and that sort of thing. That would be interesting as long as also like uh, capturing your screen for an edit. Yeah. For a vlog or something. Or for a what, Joshua? Yeah, it's actually going to be for uh, – I've got some of that as videos already in my uh, idea list on okay. my Trello app, uh, Trello board. Well, here, if you don't mind me hopping in real quick, I'd like to know, what do you guys want us to talk about in the future? What are some things, since you're here in the live audience, what are some things that are interesting to you that, uh, or that you know about us that you would love for us to kick around in future videos? Don't, don't do that. Cause if Why you not? tell them that, you know what they're going to say? I, I know John, John and his personality, he's going to say, I want you guys to cover like hot button issues. <laughs> <laughs> hot takes <laughs> it'll be vlog pastors hot take edition oh, man. um yeah why not whatever yeah. hey well uh, you guys are here you guys are interacting with with yes. the content on a regular basis and you get to have some say that's part of the fun of being in the live audience you have questions as well and hopefully today something sparked or piqued your interest about diving deeper let us know yep it, i can't guarantee we'll fully answer it we're gonna get 
sidetracked on a rabbit trail and all of a sudden there's gonna be holy spirit two by fours or whatever just came up in the the comments but we can try it i i do need like a 24-hour vlog john says we can keep track of how much coffee you actually do drink that way <laughs> oh oh okay skip the 24 of all the monotony but just record like the coffee pot i mean like <laughs> a whole day <laughs> Condense it down when you go to the coffee pot, and I want to see that thing just look, look, all the way down. <laughs> that that, that would be, be interesting funny. to me. That would be funny. Maybe or if short. I ever did like a, another one of those like silent vlogs, you know, kind of like we did the dog vlogs and stuff like that. If it was just a vlog from the perspective of my coffee mug, that would be yeah silly. No, not uh, with that. Uh, not with that new. Uh, what did they just release that all the all the guys are talking about right now? <sighs> when they do product launches, the the something two, it's uh, the little Insta, Insta three sixty go two, Insta three sixty go two almost got me, almost got me. It's just so little. It, it's so little. It's Looks so like it cute. goes on it's a like, shopping ooh, cart. Yes. I don't have to hear um, about vlogging in public anymore. Boop. Yeah. Uh, no. And on a drone. No. Double perspective I, no, I say, on a drone. I say go big or go home. You know what you need? You need one of those like shoulder stabilization rigs with the, <laughs> the thing pointed out. Then just start. You know like when you watch the movies and they've Get got the movie. camera rig that is like the camera's there and they're running and it's just. Yeah. That's what you need. You need to start vlogging <laughs> with one of those. Outfit yourself in a complete like chest rig. I'm just glad that everyone else is coming on to my way of thinking where it's like we've got to go lighter. Because I don't know whether they're just aging up with me and this is ridiculous to carry around all the time. Our backs can't take yeah. it. Or whether it's like maybe the technology is catching up and it's fitting in a smaller form factor. It's and there's no technology. reason. There's no it's reason to have that rig anymore. None. Yeah, it's just technology, but be prepared. Everything goes in cycles, so it's about to get bigger again. Yeah, you that's don't true. Like that, your cell phone. Think about the cell phone. You had the yeah. brick. And then all of a sudden we had like these tiny little like Nokia flip phones that were, ooh, they were so cute. They could almost fit in my little coin pocket. And now all of a sudden we get like, yeah. it's, it's a the tablet. Note. <laughs> so it's like, yes, uh, definitely going to happen. All right. Here's here. I think this is going to be. Um, Last comment. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, well, maybe they're. Fablets are next. Yes, they are next. Um, <laughs> discouragement in digital ministry. That's what Augie wants us to talk about. Ooh, that yeah. would be a fun one. That's a great um, one. We could definitely do that. Um, John says, I just intend to get you guys derailed. So you start on that topic. I will try to steer it off the rails again. Please do. Yes. I like that. I do and too. I, you're ornery. Uh, oh, by the way, here's going to be the last comment, and I don't even think we're going to verbally react to this. Okay. So for those that are listening to the live stream recording, uh, if you're just listening to the audio podcast, you're going to have to guess what our reaction is. I am going to read this out loud. Jared and I are going to look into the lens. We're going to visually give our reply, and then I'm ending the stream. So in well, advance, about I want you all to stay blessed and enjoy God's best and have a great week. Here is the final comment from John nervous. Hayes. He says, hey, guys, by the way, you do realize April is only 22 days away, don't you? 